It is amazing, isn't it? These people who claim to love the country, who say, we're standing up for Britain, we're standing up for British values. They're literally ripping the fabric of the nation apart. They're letting our most beautiful places be turned to shit, literally to be turned to shit. They're fake patriots. They're just doing what transnational capital tells them to do. They're doing what the oligarchs tell them to do, what the water companies who are owned often by foreign governments or by foreign investors with their money and tax havens tell them to do. They couldn't give a shit about this country. One of the things that makes Britain so special is our rivers. They're what draw people into the countryside. They draw people to engage with nature. We love messing about in them. We love swimming, we love playing in boats, we love paddling, we love fishing, whatever it might be. And because we're quite a wet place, we're blessed with rivers. We've got a series of absolutely stunning rivers and they connect the countryside to the town. They come from the uplands, they flow down through the countryside into the cities. They're a really important part of national life and perhaps even more important than we're consciously aware of. In the 21st century, when we have all the means necessary to protect them, they have been turned literally into sewers. And there's two major forces doing this. The first is the privatised water companies. Since privatisation, these companies have extracted £72 billion in dividends. This is all money that should have gone into improving their facilities in order to treat the sewage that we produce so that what comes out at the end of the sewage farms is just clean water. And these water companies are not just killing our rivers, they've been pumping raw sewage straight into the sea as well. Sometimes in some of the most popular bathing spots in Britain. And so holidaymakers flock down to the beach, say, oh, we'll go for a lovely swim in the sea, and they find themselves literally swimming in shit. Even if you were to look at it in purely economic terms, the economic value that's destroying because people don't want to go to those places anymore, that far outweighs anything which the water companies are saving from not investing properly in sewage treatment works. And in many cases, rivers which just not very long ago at all were beautiful places like this. This is one of the very few which is largely unaffected now. And swarming with wildlife are just filthy, stinking, lifeless, turds floating down them, tampons, sanitary towels, wet wipes, everything that comes out of a sewer just going straight into the river. And of course, what goes down the sewer is not just shit, but it's a whole lot of really nasty chemicals going in. There's tire crumb, there's these forever chemicals, PFASs. All of these are meant to be filtered out by the sewage system, leaving behind just pure water but they all go straight into the river when that system is bypassed. And of course, with them is loads of microplastic, which then breaks down even further, afflicting the entire ecosystem. It's just a total ecological disaster. But amazingly, that's not the worst thing that we're doing to our rivers. Sewage is the number two impact destroying them. The number one impact is agriculture. That is the top cause of river pollution in this country. And some of that is wash off from fields, it's pesticides, it's herbicides. A lot of it is coming from the intensive livestock industry. What's happened is that as more and more animals are packed into these big factories, those animals produce more manure than the river catchment can absorb. So even if farmers abide by the rules and spread that manure on the ground just at the times they're supposed to spread it and don't break any of the regulations, there's still more nutrients than that soil can possibly absorb. And come the next rainstorm, it just flushes those nutrients straight off the land into the river and kills the river as surely as if you'd pump them straight in. There have been massive cuts to environmental regulation and enforcement in this country. They literally had no means even of monitoring the situation, let alone enforcing against the people killing our rivers. And that was not an accident. That was policy. They cut and they cut and they cut the budgets of these agencies to prevent them from regulating. Because that's fundamental to neoliberal ideology, but it also reflects the lobbying power of the water companies and of the farmers. But what we're seeing is that people just aren't putting up with this shit anymore. They're coming together to defend our rivers. And we're seeing some really brilliant local campaigns trying to ensure that our rivers become the rich ecosystems that they should be. Ensure that they're beautiful places 
to swim and to have picnics beside and to allow your children to paddle in without the threat that they're going to become seriously ill by doing so. And what we see with these campaigns is that they tend to wake people up to the wider issues. You know, when people see what the government's doing to the rivers, then they start to ask, well, what's the government doing to everything else in our lives? And what these campaigns also show, I think, is that people do not regard the protection of the living world as a luxury. Even though we're in the midst of a massive cost of living crisis, even though people's literal survival now is on the line, people are still stepping up to defend the living world because these two things cannot be separated. The survival of the living world and the survival of humanity are intimately connected. Our social justice depends to a very large extent on environmental justice. Constantly we have to show how these issues are connected. We have to show the importance of the living world to our lives, the importance of our lives to the living world, how social and environmental justice are one and the same. And that's one of the things that we try to do at Double Down News. Please keep supporting us. Please allow us to keep making these videos by donating through Patreon.